Hello. The next circuit that we are going to study is a circuit that performs uh, the difference operation between two signals. And uh, it is the balanced closed loop differential amplifier. Um, and so here is the circuit configuration. It has two signals, V1 and V2, of which we are going to see the output of the circuit is going to be proportional to the difference between those two signals. And that's the name differential amplifier. And the most common form is to encounter it this way, where you have uh, two resistors of value R and then two resistors of value A times R, where A will be um, a, a particular scaling factor of our choosing. Uh, let's go ahead and analyze the circuit. The simplest way to analyze the circuit is by using superposition, uh, meaning we can uh, ignore signal V2 and just consider the contribution of signal V1 to the output of the circuit. Uh, then do the opposite, ignore signal V1 and just consider the contribution of signal V2 to the output of the circuit. And then um, add the two contributions together uh, to come up with the overall output of the circuit. Um, and we can do this, we can apply the principle of superposition because we are assuming a linear circuit. We are assuming that the, the op-amp uh, is operating in its linear region for the circuit to operate properly. So let's go ahead and apply the superposition principle. And when we do that, again, we're considering the contribution to the output of each input signal or each, of each stimulus independently. Um, and so we turn off all the other uh, signal sources while we're considering a particular input. So let's imagine, for example, that we're considering the contribution of, uh, of V1. So we're going to calculate the contribution to the output from input signal V1. And in order to do that, we're going to turn off signal V2. How do we turn off a voltage source? We short through it um, to make the voltage across its terminals equal to zero. And so the circuit then becomes, for purposes of applying the superposition principle, as follows. R, A, R, and V1 just stays in place. R, A, R. And I'm going to label this V out 1 uh, just to indicate that this is not the actual output voltage, it's just the contribution to the output voltage from input source V1. So V out 1. Now to analyze this circuit, we're going to be using the ideal op amp model. We're going to start by noticing that uh, uh, V plus is e going to be equal to V minus because this is an um, ideal op-amp connected in a negative feedback configuration, or we are assuming an ideal op-amp. And so the voltages on both input terminals when we are connected in a negative feedback configuration should be equal to each other. Um, but beyond that, I'm also going to notice that the value of V+, plus, the voltage on the input, positive input terminal, uh, is the result of voltage division of V1 uh, between resistors R and AR, given that there is no current flowing into the positive input terminal of the op-amp. And so by the voltage divider equation, V plus is going to be equal to um, AR divided by R plus AR times V1. And if I factor out all the R's and I cancel them in the numerator and denominator, I am left with A divided by 1 plus A times V1. Likewise, I can notice uh, on the other input terminal, I also have a voltage divider where the voltage V out 1 is divided between resistors A, R, and R. And so the voltage um, at the negative input terminal V minus will then be equal to R divided by A, R plus R times V out 1. And again, doing the same operation as before, factoring out the R's in numerator and denominator and then cancelling them. Um, or dividing numerator and denominator by R, I'm left with 1 divided by A plus 1 times V out 1. But then also because we are connected in negative feedback, V plus must be equal to V minus, which means A divided by 1 plus A times V1 must be equal to 1 divided by A plus 1 times V out 1. And from here, I can come up with an expression for uh, V out 1 in terms of uh, V1 um, by noticing that 
the both sides of the equation, um, I have the same value in the denominator. 1 plus a is equal to a plus 1, and so I can basically cancel those on both sides by multiplying both sides of the equation times 1 plus a. And I'll be left with um, v out 1 is equal to a times v1. So that's the contribution uh, of v1 to, to v out. Let's take a look now a second at the contribution. from V2. And I can redraw the circuit again. In this case, I am um, disconnecting the source V1. So this will be R, A, R, and I'm only considering V2 as an input. That's R, A, R. This is V2, and the output, again, I'm going to call it V out 2 because it's not really the overall output, it's just the contribution from, uh, from V2. Now, uh, first thing to notice is that um, the um, V um, plus terminal is going to be equal to, uh, to 0 volts. And why do I say that? Um, well, it's because there is no current going into the input terminal of the op-amp and, um, and that means that the current flowing uh, will be flowing through the other two branches, the one with the resistors R and A times R, uh, but in both cases the two resistors are sitting at, um, at ground and so there's going to be basically we have the parallel combination of R and A times R connected to ground. Uh, but no current flowing through that parallel combination. And so therefore, meaning I'm going to redraw this so that it's easy for us to see, this is equivalent to having an equivalent resistor here, which is basically the combination of R in parallel with AR connected to ground. But there is no current flowing into the uh, input terminal of the op-amp, and therefore uh, the voltage drop across that parallel combination of resistors is equal to zero, so the voltage at this terminal is equal to zero volts. Which means the voltage on the negative input terminal of the op-amp is also equal to zero volts. So I can apply KCL to that negative input terminal. Some of the currents leaving the terminal is equal to zero. And so I will have zero minus V2 over R plus zero minus v out 2 divided by a r is equal to 0. And so um, that basically leaves me with v out 2 is equal to negative a times v2. So I have my contributions to v out from v out 1 and v out 2 and the last step that I'm left with is just applying the superposition principle which says that the overall value of the output voltage is equal to the contributions from um, input signal V1 plus the contribution from input signal V2, or basically A times V1 minus V2. Um, and that's, that's an important result. It tells us that the output of this circuit is equal to uh, the difference of the two signals, V1 minus V2, multiply times a scaling factor that we can set externally by selecting the appropriate ratio of resistors. Uh, and again, this is another case of a circuit where, uh, the, the, since it's a difference amplifier, the common mode rejection ratio of the circuit, uh, we expect that it will be really good. And it is good as long as we make sure that we have well-matched resistors. And so resistors, um, the two R resistors and the two AR resistors should be well-matched amongst themselves in order to ensure proper operation of this circuit. Um, but that's it. This will be a differential or, or a difference amplifier. Thank you.